In the last episode of Project Scirocco, we learned about a Mark II Scirocco fuel system, removed the main fuel pump and the fuel accumulator, dropped the rear suspension to get access to the main gas tank, pulled that gas tank out, found that it still had some 16-year-old gas that looked about as orange as Kool-Aid, removed the fuel expansion tank, and looked at a fuel sending unit that's seen better days. Hey, we're back. So thanks for stopping by. Let's see, uh, last time I took out a whole bunch of parts, including the gas tank, a bunch of the back end of line uh, fuel components, the main fuel pump, the accumulator, the expansion tank. This go around, uh, we're gonna refurbish all that stuff, meaning I bought all new parts, new pump, new accumulator. I found the expansion tank uh, abroad. Couldn't find one anywhere in the US, but I found one. So we're gonna be replacing all new parts, including the gas tank. So let's go ahead and get going. And as always, I'd like to thank myself for sponsoring this video. Okay, so here's the old fuel pump and accumulator and I want to extract those old devices out and get to the brackets. Uh, right here to get the bracket off of the accumulator it's just a small nut and a screw holding it uh, in place. It's a metal bracket which has a rubber uh, piece on the inside. You can see it was pretty darn dirty but the rubber piece just comes out. Make sure that you keep track of these things because you cannot find them anywhere. Short of going to a junkyard or maybe perusing eBay, but I certainly didn't see them on any of uh, the sites online. And while they don't look too bad, I'm just going to put some dish soap and water out of a squeeze bottle and use a brush to try to clean it up and see what happens. I have to say, I'm pretty amazed at how pliable this thing is after 35 years. And after a little scrubbing, uh, it doesn't look too bad. Next, I want to do the same thing to the uh, metal bracket. Just use a little detail brush that you can get online, and a little soap and water, and it came out pretty good as well. So here's the before and after. Next up uh, is taking out the main fuel pump from the bracket. And as I mentioned before, the main fuel pump is sitting inside of a rubber uh, absorber and it sort of isolates from vibration and it just pulls right out. Same thing with uh, this piece. Let's just use some soap and water and scrub it up. And afterwards, it looks pretty good. This is in pretty good shape. Again, before and after. And then I'll go ahead and hit the bracket itself. Obviously, being on the bottom side of the car, it's covered with, oh, 100,000 miles worth of dirt and grime. And again, a little scrubbing later, not too bad, before and after. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to hit were the five metal clips that attach the gas tank to the actual underframe of the car. Uh, these were pretty darn dirty and I don't have a sandblast cabinet or anything, so a little bit of elbow grease and some soap and water and a little bit of degreaser and before and after. Okay, so here's the brand new gas tank that I got. I believe it's a Spectra. And you can see the mounting holes on the front. Again, three on the front and two on the back. It came uh, with the tabs in the back. That one bent just a little bit in the packaging. And this one bent all the way 180 degrees over. So uh, some simple prying by a screwdriver and pliers uh, got that guy back into shape. Okay, what you're seeing there are the vent tubes on the top of the gas tank. Uh, those actually snake through uh, to the rear passenger wheel well. And then the smaller one snakes up to the gravity vent valve. And the larger one, which is the tube, which actually has a metal insert into it, uh, goes to the top of the gas filler tube. And finally, here's the hole which the fuel sending unit and the in-tank fuel pre-pump uh, go into. And that's the access uh, that you get from the back seat once the tank is installed. 
so I followed five steps to paint my tank. Five. Number one, degrease the surface. These tanks are shipped out with a pretty thick layer of oil to protect from rust or other contaminants, so you really need to take care to degrease the surface before you move on. Number two, mask. Go out and get yourself some blue painter's masking tape and mask off all those areas like the vent tube and the fill tube and the hole where the fuel sending unit and pre-pump go to make sure that you don't get paint where you don't want paint to be. Number three, final clean. So somewhere in between the masking and the final clean, I'm going to go ahead and scuff up the surface a little bit with a Scotch-Brite pad so that the primer sticks. And that may leave a little bit of debris behind. And just to make sure that there's no more contaminant or oils uh, left on the surface, I do a final clean. Number four is to apply a couple coats of primer. Uh, primer serves to make sure that there's a good adhesion layer between the actual metal and the paint. And number five is apply your paint. Now, I don't have any paint gear. I'm not sure I want any paint gear. I'll just go ahead and use a simple rattle can uh, automotive paint that you can get at any of the major auto stores or, or even Lowe's. And when it comes down to it, I'm painting a gas tank that nobody's going to see or know about except for me. But, hey, I'll know it looks good. Okay, so let's paint a gas tank. <laughs> With the gas tank freshly painted and drying, I turn my attention to the expansion tank. In all likelihood, there's probably nothing wrong with this tank, but since it's uh, many, many, many years old and it's turned color, I just decided to see if I could find a new one and replace the whole system. Now I explained the purpose of the expansion tank in part four of the series, but as a quick reminder, um, the free pump that's sitting in the gas tank sends fuel over to the expansion tank, shoots it out the back to the S-shaped tube, which then sends it over to the main fuel pump, which then sends it on forward to the engine to the fuel filter. The expansion tank also serves as a return line from the main line and back into the fuel tank itself. So this expansion tank is almost impossible to find in the U.S., but I lucked out and found a brand new one at the Heritage Parts Center, which is located in the U.K. It was easy to order online, and I believe I had that part within a week, if not a week and a half, straight to my door. So to be clear, I'm not being paid or sponsored by Heritage Parts Center. I was just happy that they had the part and got it to me so fast. Once I located a new expansion tank, I had to find all of the fuel lines that go with it. So I was able to find a really nice kit put together by Mark I Auto Haas in Pennsylvania. And they've got a kit that includes all the hoses associated with the main fuel pump, the accumulator, the expansion tank, with the exception of the S-shaped steel tube, which I already had. And it's a pretty nice kit. Uh, it comes with 
a line, the fuel pump to accumulator. It comes uh, with accumulator to primary feed line, although I never took that off of the main feed line and they didn't have it in stock anyway, so I didn't use that. It comes with a smoothbore 11 to 9 millimeter adapter, uh, which is a line that fits between the S-shaped steel tube from the expansion tank to the fuel pump because those two out or inputs are different sizes. Um, it comes with the two hoses that you need that are going to go inside the fuel tank uh, connecting the transfer fuel pump or pre-pump to the fuel gauge sender. Uh, it's got a 55 millimeter connector hose for connecting the S-shaped tube to the expansion tank, a 270 millimeter hose for connecting the steel return line to the expansion tank, and then it's got the two transfer hoses that come from the main gas tank. One of them is 590 millimeters and one is 620 millimeters long, and they also come with a, an abrasion sleeve. I didn't use that in my installation, but it comes with it anyway. So all in all, I think it's a pretty nice kit. So let's talk about hose clamps. As you can see from the kit that I bought from Mark 1 Auto House, uh, the kit came with a bunch of screw-driven worm drive hose clamps that most of us are used to. You know, the ones that look like these. While they're extremely easy to use, the disadvantage to a typical worm drive uh, hose clamp is that they usually provide uneven pressure across the hose and that's something that's not really desirable especially with using fuel lines and especially when the fuel lines are high pressure. Okay so what I'll be using instead of the regular hose clamps are what's called single ear stepless hose clamps and this is a assortment that you see. Uh, it kind of looks like a ring almost with a gemstone on top and the item on the top is the ear. It requires a special uh, clamping tool shown here. This one I believe is by Knipix. It's pretty easy to use. Once you put the clamp on top of your hose, you just take the tool, put it over the ear uh, in the jaws of the tool, apply some pressure, and as you apply that pressure, it evenly squeezes the clamp on all sides of the hose, uh, ensuring an extremely tight clamp. Clamp. Okay, so when I'm putting on hose clamps, I want to make sure that I'm clamping onto a nice, firm, solid surface. So I tend to mark past where there's any barbs on the input. Uh, make sure that I mark the hose as well so that when I slip the hose on, I can put the clamp right in between the two uh, marks and then secure it, ensuring a nice, secure clamp. Clamp. And the process is exactly the same for all the rest of the hoses that need to go into this expansion tank. So let's get her done. All right, so here is the fuel sending unit with the old pre-pump uh, still attached. And you can see that it's got a little bit of corrosion on it. You can see that the line from the top of the sending unit down to the pre-pump is pretty much disintegrated away. And then there was another tube that uh, is the return tube, which is gone uh, pretty much as well, just uh, an inch left. And when I try to disassemble or take the connector off, you can see that it's so brittle, plastic so brittle, that the uh, two clips just fall off. Here I'm just taking a pair of pliers off of the line that actually went right into the output of the pre-pump, and you can see it's in pretty sad shape. Uh, at this point, it's just time to start cleaning it up a little bit, and you can see that the O-ring that was on the underside of the sending unit uh, is pretty much disintegrated and flat. Not much left. So, you know, at this point, it's uh, nothing much I can do besides try to clean this up and uh, see if we can restore this thing to usable condition.
All right, and it is time to put the fuel sender back together. Here's the parts from the Mark I Auto House kit. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and get a new VEMO fuel pre-pump. This is the pump that's going to go inside the tank, brand new unit, and let's go ahead and put it together. This uh, pre-pump also comes with two, uh, looks like screen filters. There are those uh, oblong filter and a circular filter with a rubber grommet. I think the last one had a rubber grommet, just fits over the bottom, sits on the bottom of the tank. All right, first thing to do is to take the fuel resistant line and attach it to the output from the fuel pre-pump up into the line that goes to the fuel sender. Now it's kind of a tight fit, at least this one was, and I reverted back to using the heat gun to expand it a little bit and be able to get the clips on both sides. Next thing to do was to attach the connector to the fuel pump and because the connectors were broken I decided to go with a fuel resistant glue, in this case seal all, never used it before, uh, but we're going to try it out here and put a little dab of it on both sides of the connector to keep it in place because those connector tabs were broken. And the final thing to do was to attach the fuel resistant hose which is part of the return line. And this fuel sender is done. It will. Alright. Now we're going to have all the clearance we need. Here's the problem. We don't have enough room to get those hoses on there. What did you say? We don't have enough room to get those hoses on there. That's what I thought you said. Alright, so we've been going out for a little bit trying to get this gas tank back installed. And, uh,. Had to really drop the suspension down as far as it would go. It was getting stuck on the ga on the uh, jack stands. Uh, got it. There. there we go. And then ran into the problem of the two vent tubes uh, right down here. So these two these two vent tubes coming off of the tank. This line right here is just old and about as rigid as it comes. And the gas fuel line that I got to use as vent tube didn't fit on this one. The one that was on here is the uh, line that's got the metal insert in it, which you can't find anywhere. So we're off to AutoZone again to see if we can find some, some vent tubes. And then the, the real uh, kicker was this fuel filler hose, uh, which you can see here on the tank. And the diameter of this was just not going over the uh, nub on the tank. So what we had to do was get the old heat gun out and heat up the tube until it's stretched enough to get it back over this tank. And that's really what it took. It took the heat gun to loosen this up enough to get this filler tube onto the tank. So if you're going to do this yourself, that's sort of a tip that you might want to think about. So if we can find these vent tubes, we'll get back into this install. Uh, but right now we're, we're paused. Mmm, beer. About the right angle, by the way. Oh yeah, okay.
Okay, getting closer. Here's the new accumulator attached to the new fuel pump. Uh, both are in their brackets and ready to install. Two electrical connections for the main fuel pump. Banjo over to the accumulator. The bottom goes to the main, which is right here, which we never took off from the main line. Two electricals, then we've got to hook up to the expansion tank back in the back and this whole assembly with the sound absorber gets attached to the two parts in the frame. So here's everything installed. I have to say it was a really interesting fit. So after it's done it seems to be a pretty elegant uh, design but you have to really think through what needs to go where and take your time when you're installing it. Well at least I had to. So here it is, a final view of the gas tank, a new gas tank installed with all the fuel elements. Wow. Okay, remember the vent lines coming from the gas tank? We actually did find new line for the smaller output, but ended up reusing the larger diameter line as shown here. A little vent tube management and a couple hose clamps later, and we're done. Before we install the rebuilt fuel sending unit into the main gas tank, we've got to install the brand new O-ring that came with the gas tank. Just slides on the bottom, and once you get it past everything, perfect fit. If you use a little bit of petroleum jelly or something sticky, some oil, grease, uh, to keep that O-ring in place while you install it, it really helps. All right, so here's the moment of truth, the time to put the whole unit back in the tank. And this was a little scary for me, I have to admit, that number one, with that strainer on, it took quite a bit of uh, jiggling and wriggling to get the thing put into place. Uh, but once it did fall into place, uh, it locked up just fine. So the next thing I did was attach the electrical connector. And to be honest, there's three pins on that connector, and I don't know if I got it on right or not. I guess I'll find out soon enough. Next it was time to mark and cut to length the two lines that go into the fuel sending unit. Uh, one is a return, the one I'm putting on right now, and the other one, the longer one in the kit, uh, is actually goes to the output from the in-tank fuel pump. All right, holy crap. There it is. New gas tank, refurbished fuel sender, new in-tank pump, Boy, it has been weeks since I started this. And the last thing to do is to put on this cover and call it a day. Wow. All right, so that's all we have for today. Uh, it took a long while to get that fuel system put in. Uh, just went at it a little bit at a time, thought everything through, had a couple missteps along the way. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the way it went in. Nice and clean, um, learned a bunch. I've got a uh, list of all of the parts and links down below in the description. Um, glad that you all stopped by. Appreciate you taking a look. If you like what I'm doing, maybe you might think about hitting the subscribe button or at least throwing me a like. And. We'll see you next time.